what's going on guys your boy lq mr real deal fantasy hq fire content only this is the fantasy football picks and bets presented by prize picks make sure you guys download the app today sign up using promo code mmn you guys be set up for success because they're matching up to 100 bucks that is free money people go get it now link is in the bio prizepicks.com so i got a great show for you guys today studs and then some duds and of course the injury recap which is my least favorite part of the show but later in the show i got a drop them list a 2.0 drop them list it's redraft are we going to hold on to some of these guys a little bit longer or are we just going to straight up cut ties so we'll get to that later in the show i don't want to waste any more time so let's get right into it so let's get to the desserts the stud muffins man i get really excited about this list man because i have most of these guys on my rosters being that i'm a psychopath i'm in like 20 leagues but you know seriously i'm like in 14 leagues and i really feel as though this stud muffin list gets me hyped up because most of these guys are exploding i i really root for week after week and so do you and that's why i think you love the stud muffin list because guys like stefan diggs Love to see them put up 30 fantasy points today. 162 yards, one touchdown, eight catches. This is his first game this year with over 30 fantasy points. This is what we've been waiting for all season. Him and Josh Allen connecting, this is exactly what we want week after week. And I definitely feel as though this can keep continuing. But I love that he put up 30 fantasy points. Had a tough matchup in one of my leagues against one of my league makes my home, my home league, you know, people I know and interact with in real life with, they get to talk crap to me in person, but I get to talk crap this week because I'm most likely getting the dub because of Stefan Diggs. So I love what he did this week. Hopefully we can keep it rolling. Now let's go on to the next guy, Ramon Stevenson. Ooh, he blew up today. Two touchdowns, a hundred yards on the ground. I love everything I saw out of him. He ran hard, found the end zone twice, and he also was involved in a passing game. Five targets. I actually love that for him to move forward. I know Damian Harris is still there, but he's dealing with injuries as well. So I definitely love that Stevenson was able to step up because, hey, he had all the camp buzz. He was the preseason rushing leader. Let's not forget that. So we know this dude can ball out. 20 touches today, and I definitely think he should be the guy to at least split with Harris to have some type of rotation where he can find the end zone, become fantasy relevant every single week. So Ramon Stevenson is a stud this week. So moving forward, I want to see more of him. Now to my next guy, bounce back season. C.D. Lamb was a dud last week going against Denver, but he showed up today against Atlanta. Seven catches, 94 yards, two touchdowns, people. Two touchdowns. He had two. Dos. That's exactly what I needed out of him. I had a lot of him in DFS, and I definitely was happy that he was able to show up and show out and stomp a mud hole in the Atlanta Falcons. They only put up three points today. So this was definitely something that we needed out of C.D. Lamb because it was a little embarrassing to have him in starting lineups with four points. So thankfully, he's on the stud list this week, and I absolutely love it. Now let's move on to the duds. Oof, man, it was a tough week for some of these players, and some of these guys are in starting lineups. They are starting for gets, but man, it was really, really rough to have these guys in starting lineups this week. Let's start with T.J. Hawkinson and that weird game against Pittsburgh, man. It went into overtime and ended in the tie, but man, he only had one target. Put up zero points, zero, donut, nothing, nada. And it's a little weird, you know, with them having an extra period of game and Hawkerson getting no targets, getting no points. I mean, going into the fourth quarter, honestly, Jared Goff only had 54 yards. So, yeah, that's a little embarrassing. So they were having a rough time. So that's probably why Hawkerson had zero. But still, man, that's embarrassing to have as an offense right now. So, he definitely gets the dud. I definitely feel as though he'll bounce back. I don't think this would be an every single week thing. Obviously, I do not wish to see, you know, TJ Hawkerson, especially a tight end in my starting lineup, put up zero points. What the hell's going on? And speaking of a zero in a tight end, Mike Gusecki wasn't safe either, man. He led the tight ends in targets. He had seven of them, but still had zero points against the Ravens. So, yeah, he put up a nice dud. Um, I've seen somebody post that, you know, somebody was going up against, you know, Hawkinson today after they had, you know, Mike Gusecki in their lineup, and it went 0-0. So, <laughs> I guess a uh, unspoken agreement for a fair fight this week, huh? Yeah, so uh, Gusecki, you get the dud label this week, and hopefully you can bounce back from that because that's a – a little embarrassing as well to have in starting lineups. So the next guy, A.J. Brown. Man, that was a little weird, you know, being that you're the top wide receiver. You know, you only come down with three points and 
it's it, it's a little disgusting, man. You you need to get it together. But overall, you know, they, they they had basically a different game plan. I feel as though, you know, the running back by committee was working. They were able to move the ball on the ground a little bit between Foreman and Peterson. Um, I feel like, you know, their emergence, you know, basically Peterson and, you know, Foreman, they actually can establish like a running back committee. And I feel as though they're running the ball a little bit more efficient than they were actually throwing the ball. And then Ryan Tannehill only having one touchdown. That should tell you a little bit of what was going on with that offense. So uh, AJ Brown, you get the dud label this week and hopefully you can bounce back next week. So let's move on to the injury recap. My least favorite part of the show. Let's start with Aaron Jones suffering an MCL sprain, which is very unfortunate. I definitely hate this injury for him. Aaron Jones was somebody that I had a lot of shares up this, this summer. And, um, this is a huge hit. So AJ Dillon's season may be activated. I'm not too sure how long Aaron Jones will be out, but I'm pretty sure he's going to miss some time being that it's an MCL sprain. Um, he was basically helped off the field, but he was seen back on the bench. So he was back out there watching the game. So that leaves us with some type of hope that it's not too crazy serious, but he will miss some time for sure. Um, moving on to Baker Mayfield, his knee was a little banged up on the tackle, but apparently he's OK. So I don't expect him to miss too much time, but something to monitor throughout the week. Um, Dallas Goddard took a nasty hit, so he's probably in concussion protocol. Um, he didn't look too good getting back up. He looked a little dazed, but he was able to walk off. So that's also great to see. Um, CD Lamb, you know, a bruised arm. That's, you know, something we need to just put out there so we can monitor throughout the week. But I'm pretty sure that's nothing. I'm expecting him 100% to play the following week uh, against Kansas City. Um, uh, next one, uh, Ricky Seals Jones. He had a hip injury, so he exited the game early as well. Um, not too sure the time frame on that being the time that I'm recording, but, uh, yeah, that's the injury recap. Not too many big names, not too many crazy injuries, nothing season ending. Thankfully, you know, I hate when we see that and hate to report that, but, uh, hopefully these guys rest up. Hopefully we can see them next week. So let's move them to the drop them list. Let's talk about drop them list. Come on. Let's get these zombies out of here. Let's cut ties with these guys. These guys need to be put in question. So the first guy I'm going to be talking about. The biggest fifth round bust, I would say, in a very long time. Mike Davis, man. So Mike Davis is basically remotely useless at this point. Him being in starting lineups, I do not recommend at all. I mean, we're about three weeks removed where we should have had this conversation of dropping him. But it, let's have this conversation now because I see a lot of people still having him on the roster, hoping they can get some type of life. Him and Cordero Patterson had the same amount of carries today for – and then – we look at Wing Galman with 15 carries when he was inactive the week before. That doesn't make sense to me. For him to have 15 carries and you to have four and you're not injured, that lets me know everything, man. You're losing carries to Cordero Patterson. Now we have to worry about Wing Galman. Like, I know it was a blowout. I understand that, you know, there was no point of playing Mike Davis, but this just looks embarrassing. If you can't contribute with those four carries that you got early in the game before it became a blowout, you're useless, man. So I'm suggesting 100% we cut ties with Mike Davis. He needs to go ASAP, man. He's not contributing week to week, not doing anything remotely, you know, fantasy relevant for us. So what is he on our bench for? Like, playoffs are around the corner. I'm pretty sure if you had Mike Davis as your RB1, we shouldn't even be conversating about playoffs because – I don't think you're going to be sitting at that table, but <laughs> just saying if you are in a playoff run, if you are like thinking about playoffs and Mike Davis is on your roster, you need to cut ties and try to pick up some of these guys that are popping up week to week. I mean, I will pick up a, a Devonte Foreman. I will pick up a Freeman. I will pick up, you know, all these other guys that are floating around, you know, on the waiver wire that are getting some type of touches that are at least getting 10 touches a game. You know what I mean? So there's guys out there floating around or make some trades. I don't know. You probably can't sell him Mike Davis for anything. You probably can't even, you know, put him on the waiver wire and then hope for somebody to go pick him up because that's not probably not going to happen. But moving on, let's move on to the next guy. Um, Julio Jones, man, is currently on IR. I talked about him two weeks ago, hoping that he can get it together. I know finding out Derrick Henry is out for the season. So it's like maybe, you know, the wide receivers will get a boost. But Julio Jones, once again, suffering injuries. He's on IR, so it's kind of like, what do we do with him? In redraft, I'm suggesting we drop him, man. It's not anything too crazy. He only has one game this season with over four catches. It's already a low volume, you know, target, you know, team where they don't really pass heavy like that. But with 
you know, Derrick Henry out, you would expect that. So it's like I'm holding on to Julio Jones on my bench. Not me personally, but I'm just saying you're probably holding on to him because of his name. And yes, there's potential there. Yes, he's one of the elite talents. But with these injuries, man, I don't know if it's that anymore. Like, I don't want to say, you know, flat out cut him right now because I would be basically telling you to jump the gun because what if he does come back in the playoffs and, you know, Tannehill, A.J. Brown, that offense in general is getting it together because, man, they're winning games overall. So it's not like, you know, they want to X Julio Jones out of the out of the scheme or out of the offense. So if he comes back, he's healthy, and I guess, you know, he's playing. It's like I don't know if I can trust him in a playoff lineup anyway. Um, I feel as though you're putting him out there. Again, like I said, he only has one game over four catches. Like, that's really nothing. That's nothing attributing week to week. That's nothing to be excited about. I mean, most of the time he's in starting lineups just because of his name. So I think, you know, you have to make that decision if you're going to keep him on your bench this entire season. Pretty sure you can't sell him right now and redraft. I'm pretty sure nobody's going to bite on it. I'm pretty sure his name is not selling as as much as we would want it to. Maybe if this was like four weeks ago, you try to sell him, you probably could. But, man, these injuries is what's really, really holding him back. Um, moving on to LaVisca Chenault, man, um, a guy that has a 20% target share. Uh, do we cut him? I don't know, man. I feel as though it's more so play calling Trevor Lawrence and him in a mixture, you know, Chenault. But, man, today he led the Jags in targets. He had eight but he only had three catches. Like he hasn't done anything remotely fantasy relevant in six weeks. So it's kind of like, do we cut Chanel? Chanel's not being utilized, right? He's not being schemed. He's not being the focal point. He's just not that guy. I mean, I feel as though this is a bust this year for, you know, everybody that jumped on that wave in the off season because his hype train was very high. And I feel as though, you know, I jumped on, I called a couple shares. I don't have that many shares of LaVisca Chenault, so I feel as though I'm not really getting burned off him, but I feel as though even the two shares I have, I'm questioning, do I drop him? Because again, the guy that has like a healthy target share, we were looking at like, I don't want to drop this guy because he's still getting the targets. He still has the volume, but he's not getting the catches. He's not getting the touchdowns. So it doesn't look like he's going to be doing anything fantasy relevant for the remainder of the season. Again, I don't know if it's the rookie quarterback, new head coach, whatever it is is going on. It doesn't look like a guy that deserves to be on on rosters. And it's hard, again, to sit there and cut a guy with a healthy target share, but we might have to rip that Band-Aid off and just say, hey, you got to go, buddy. You're just not that guy, Chief. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, those were the three guys that I was talking about the dropping list. Hopefully you guys aren't dealing with this headache week to week where these guys are in your starting lineups. Hopefully they've been on your bench, but it's a matter if we're going to keep these guys on the bench going into the playoffs. They're just taking up space at this point. I mean, I feel as though if a, if a guy come off the waiver that's hot next week or the week after that, these guys are definitely candidates that you could drop to go pick up that hot commodity of that week to fill in for a spot that you actually need because these guys – they're not really doing much for me. I really feel as though you can cut them today and, you know, you don't have to worry about it tomorrow. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Leave a comment below on what you guys think about the episode. And definitely make sure you check out prizepicks.com. Sign up today using promo code MMN. You guys be set up for success because they're matching up to 100 bucks. It's free money, people. It's not too late. I know it's 10 weeks later, but you can still do it today. Do it now. The link is in the bio. And I'll see you guys next week for another great episode. Peace.